Just about every culture has a fable about a person seeking love and then losing it due to their incompetence or ignorance of their foe. The Greeks are no different. One of their many fables on this subject is called A Lion in Love and is found in the collection of Aesop's fables. In Aesop's fable, The Lion in Love, a lion falls in love with a woodcutter's daughter. The lion demands for the woodcutter to give him his daughter. And the woodcutter doesn't want to give up his daughter, but is afraid of what the lion might do to him. The woodcutter tells the lion that he will give up his daughter to the lion if he will remove his claws and his teeth, saying that his daughter is afraid of them. The lion agreed to have his teeth and claws removed. Once the lion had removed his teeth and claws, he returned to collect the woodcutter's daughter. The woodcutter, who was no longer afraid of the lion because of the lion's defenselessness, chased after the lion with a club into the forest. Every fable doesn't have to have just one moral. Since this fable has two main characters, either the lion or the man could be the hero, depending on the reader's interpretation. If we take this fable with the lion as the hero, one could say that the moral is to never change oneself for the acceptance of another person. The lion, had he never lost his claws or his teeth, could have defended himself when the woodcutter came after him with a club. Another moral of the story with the lion as a hero would be that love conquers even the toughest people. If the lion hadn't been in love with the woodcutter's daughter, he would have never been convinced that he should remove his claws and his teeth. The lion has many, many characteristics of a hero. The lion is strong and aspires for something higher than that would normally be obtainable. The lion also is defeated by his passion for a woman, which is the case for many Greek heroes. If we take the man as the hero of the fable, the moral is quite different. The woodcutter would have most likely lost his daughter if the lion would have had all of his attacking abilities. So instead of fighting the lion physically, he fought him cleverly by tricking the lion into defeating himself. The man also has several aspects of a hero, but his are closer to that of a modern hero or anti-hero. The man uses his wit against the lion instead of his brute force which is meager compared to the lion's teeth and claws. The lion in this fable represents the ruling few, whether it is a monarch, an oligarchy, aristocracy, or just the toughest man in the village. He has the power to overrun the man with ease, and is so arrogant he believes that he will get whatever he wants. The man in this fable represents the underdog, much like the fox's or jackal's role in many fables. To protect his possession, he uses any means possible, such as his wit, and later, his advantage over the lion. Fables can tell us all about the culture that the fable was popular in. The lion in love takes a lot of aspects of Greek life that the Greeks thought would always be around. The use of animals in this fable indicates a society with stratification. The Greek society in which this fable was written was highly stratified. There were aristocrats, common merchants, and slaves. Although we still use animal fables in our society, there are not as many popular as human-based fables in our literature. The ancient Greek culture also valued power. One point to notice about this fable is that the lion and the man do not try to work out 
things diplomatically. It's more about the man defeating the king of nature, the lion. You'll also notice that the lion asked for permission to marry the man's daughter, even though he probably could have taken the woman from the man if he decided that's what he wanted to do, much like Zeus often did without remorse. In Greek life, much like the fable, the mother didn't get a say in the decision of the daughter's suitors. The men made all the decisions in the ancient Greek culture. Although women weren't given equal decision-making power to that of a man's, they were given power over the slaves of the household. Fables aren't only meant to entertain people, but also inform and improve the listener's life. A moral can teach what is acceptable or unacceptable in a story or society. Since few morals change with different societies, fables can cross cultures without many problems. Like Aesop's The Lion in Love, one of the morals of the Panchatantra is mental strength and deceit are stronger in warfare than brute force. Even the Jewish culture has a similar fable with the same moral. The first man bets a second man that he can carry more in a cart on the way to a rock than a second man can carry back from it. The second man accepts the challenge. The first man turns to the second man and says, now climb in the cart. 